Hey guys, uh, today I'm here with my friend Kyle Joins. Joins? Jones? I, I never know how to pronounce your last name. It's Joins. Yeah. Joins. I have a cheesy thing where I say, don't forget the joy. Because <laughs> it's J-O-Y. You're so freaking Christian, man. <laughs> so, um, Kyle Joins. Uh, I've known Kyle for, what, about a year and a half now? A yeah, year a little over a year and a half, I yeah. think. Yeah. Um, but Kyle's got a really cool story, um, one that hits a lot more close to home for me as far as um, how Jesus introduced himself and what God's kind of doing in his life. Um, but yeah, uh, Kyle volunteered uh, upon my request yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, to, just to talk about his life today. Um, so yeah. hi, Kyle. Hey. Um, so you and I have talked in the past about how you lived on the East Coast with Wilmington and everything. Mm-hmm. Um did you give our viewers a little snapshot of like what your parents were like, your your friends, you know, where you lived, your struggles, et cetera, all your relationship dynamics? Like, what was that like for you back in the day? Mm. Well, first off, not to be a complete stickler, but lit grew up at the beach, not Wilmington, Outer Banks, but that's okay. Oh, right, right. I don't know why yeah. I keep thinking Wilmington. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people do that. Uh, just, you know, the beach and like Wilmington's like the main one in North Carolina. So. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a pretty common thing, um, but yeah. Uh, so grew up on the Outer Banks with uh, my mom and my brother. Um, my parents were divorced at a very young age. Uh, for me, uh, I was I think I was five uh, when they actually split up, and mm. and my mom uh, kind of got custody of of us kids and like took us down to the Outer Banks and. Uh, I think, you know, somewhere in there, her and my stepdad got married and, um, but I kind of, I would say didn't really have, uh, too much of a father figure growing up. Like it was kind of distant. Like we would see my dad every now and then on the weekends and, um, and didn't grow up in the church either. So it was kind of like, uh, you know, my grandfather had us going to a Methodist church when we were really, really young, but, mm-hmm. um, but as far as church went, it was like, we didn't really talk about it. We didn't talk about Jesus. Like there was no, uh, like knowledge or like uh, concept of like, man, Christ in you or like the church or community. Or so like what would you talk that. about? Oh, that's a good question. I think, you know, I, I think if I compare like some of the relationships I see certain families have and like the depth of conversation that, that they would have in certain families it's much richer about like like what is the purpose of life like what and and i don't know i don't know that that we went into those conversations i think we kind Mm. of we maybe just like existed as like a family (laughs) like like what's going on in the world like oh we had a soccer game or like this video like we just like the superficial minutiae of life yes yeah (laughs) which which sounds like and and i want to be clear uh in talking about like my family and my mom and my brother is like I always try and guard like that because I love them so much and and I think you know my mom is I always talk about her like in a saint like of that sacrificial love like taking care of two boys and like soccer practices and travel Mm -hmm. soccer like you know doing all of that and like making a way for us to have travel soccer and different things in our lives I think um I I can't speak enough to like her love for us. And, um, but I think you just, you operate out of like your resources and what you know and what you're brought up with. And, Mm -hmm. and so, um, I would say that the depths of our our conversations weren't always, um, super deep and super like, Hey, this is what you're here for. This is, you know, this is how you court a woman. Like, this is how you like go through (laughs) life, like different things like that. And, and Mm -hmm. I think my mom would be humble and like admit that. And she would, she's, she's been like, Hey, seek out like a life coach or seek out someone, you know, obviously media. Yeah. <laughs> Shameless plug. Yeah. <laughs> life coach. <laughs> so, um, but I, yeah, so she's, she'd be very honest with that, but I would say, and, and I may be beating around the bush a little bit just to say like, I don't, I don't really know. I, I, I wouldn't say like our conversations were that deep. I think we kind of just existed and we were like, Mm-hmm. You know, we were like, oh, do you want to play soccer? Do you want to play Halo? Do you want to do this? Like, what's for dinner? Like, I, I, and it's almost like 
were missing one another like on some sort of like deep level and deep connection. Do you feel like it was a process of just trying to get through the day, just trying to survive, just trying to like fill the time? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because... Yeah, I think I think that's what I, I see a lot of people do nowadays too. It's just like we're just trying to make it through the day. Mm -hmm. um, but um, it, yeah, that, I think that's that's a hard question because uh, it, it, it makes me just analyze like everything that uh, that like happened in my childhood and and mm -hmm. um, and I I, I think if I could step back and holistically look at it, I think my mom kind of raised us and it was like, it was like legalism sort of like, don't do this, don't do that for a lot of, mm -hmm. a lot of my childhood, which is like, um, in, in the sense of like law and morality and the rules, like has some merit to it. Like, I feel like she raised us well. She raised us like doing uh, chores and like different things. And like, uh, I think even my brother would say, like we can relate to a lot of people because of the way my mom uh, raised us, which, you know, I'm thankful for her. But at the same time, there's a lot of like, hey, don't do these things instead of like, this is what you do do. Like, right. That like sense. the whole concept of running away from something <laughs> instead of running towards something. Right. Gotcha. Yeah. And so around 18 or something like that, the wheel is kind of just like, like for my brother, like he's like, OK, we're well, an adult now. So mm -hmm. we're going to do what? we want to do and like the wheels kind of fell off of the legalism and it just mm -hmm. completely translated to like lawlessness and like partying and different things like that i think yeah i bet uh, that it was awesome <laughs> but at the same time it's like oh my gosh what am i doing yeah i don't think i don't i think at the time you're like yeah like because all the kids at school are like we want to party and different stuff and so like have like a especially in a culture that like doesn't like appreciate or like have community and Jesus and stuff like that in a, in a culture that's very dark and, and like party centered and like tourism and mm -hmm. like different things like that I think I never I, I was like this is the norm like everyone does and I think to some degree when I talk to people around around uh <laughs> like the state or just people that I know is like you know yeah that's everywhere you have partying you have drugs you have different um just like falling away um from the truth and what's good mm -hmm. um but for us, it was like, it was almost like freedom in a sense, but we didn't see, or I didn't see until later that the freedom that I was having, that was, it was actually destroying our family and destroying a lot of, um, things that, uh, like integrity and purpose and like why we're here. Like, I think, I think it, we could look at it at times like, cool, we get to party, we get to invite girls over, we get to like have this like mm -hmm. community, it's like facade community, but like, what are you doing with that time? Mm -hmm. um, and so then like later on, like looking at it and being like all of that, essentially like, you know, I think in Romans it talks about like, what fruit did you have now, like back then of the things you're now ashamed of? It's like, you know, uh, what was I building back then? Um, it, and a lot of it was just like binge drinking and like mm -hmm. alcohol, like, you know, or smoking weed or different things like that. And so I'm very, uh, for whoever's listening, I'm very open about this stuff. Like <laughs> smoking I, just, weed. I just talk about like what happened and, and cause it's, it's, it's no longer who I am. So it's mm -hmm. like, I feel a lot of freedom to just be like, Hey, this happened. And like, but I don't, I don't identify with it anymore. You know, I, I think it's really special that <laughs> you have that position on it because I think, you, you know, growing up and making all the poor decisions that we make and looking at the areas where our family has, um, I guess, dropped the ball with coaching and guiding us. Yeah. Um, we can carry a lot of condemnation for the decisions we've made, whether we were... Yeah. Um, cognizant of them or not but being so open and saying i used to smoke weed i used to mm -hmm. do that's that's so cool because i think you know this more than anybody <laughs> else that i know but <laughs> you are not your circumstances you are not your actions yeah. like you've done them but your identity is separate and we'll, we'll talk about that here in a couple minutes <laughs> I was jumping ahead a little bit <laughs> yeah but anyways i, I don't want to take too much away from what you were saying yeah yeah and i i think um I, you know, I, 
I look at the way I grew up and it's easy to be like, man, I didn't have it all. But I think even, even the families that are together, they're like, no, no situation is perfect and you can, mm-hmm. you can find fault in it. But I would say the really tough things, um, which the enemy, you know, tried to steal, kill and destroy back then, like are turned, have turned into like good things. Whereas like, you know, a lot of people go through different phases a lot. Like the world right now is like, it has this like, <clears throat> party and like like binge drinking and like community culture that but you look at those interactions and and when you drink and you do those things that you, you're pretty much like you're you're giving yourself over to drunkenness and, and I can't tell you how many bad decisions I've I've made back back in the day of just like because I drank too much or I did something as like and, and rather than like and, and I think that was one of the things when I started meeting Christians, I started seeing like, uh, it was like God's like saving me out of that. I was like, I started seeing, man, I don't have to binge drink. I don't have to like party to live a life that's full, to have community, to, to like do things that are enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Um, like that's part of, that's part of my story. And like God's, God's graces of just being like, Hey, you don't like, I remember sitting, um, in a, in a, I don't know if I'm jumping ahead here, but uh, sitting in a room uh, after like probably like the summer after like first meeting Christians like Ben Wilson and those guys like mm-hmm. who, who I now live like live with and I'm like God you're amazing but meeting those guys and then be like hey Jesus is real hey we're gonna do a scavenger hunt hey we're gonna do different things that are exciting uh, and and we're just doing all these things and having a great time without smoking weed without drinking without like ruining my, my like mental state or like <laughs> like like my my uh like consciousness or like and like developing relationships like without doing those things you know not to i'm not condemning anyone that has a drink but it's like when you binge drink and you you completely lose like control of your body it's like that that leads that i mean you you're like yeah it's fun and like everyone else is doing it. it's like but like what if you take a step back what are you actually doing um and just to, to and that was god kind of rescuing me out of that by saying like hey you can have fullness of joy fullness of community fullness of like acceptance and stuff without all of that it's actually better mm-hmm. and so i remember sitting in a in a room full of people smoking weed and like being the only one in the room and not being like, I'm not going to do that. Mm-hmm. And not knowing why. I was just like, yeah. And it's like God's like preserving things, like setting me apart. Like back then, even before I had accepted him, like his love was <laughs> like, it almost makes me cry. Like his love was like, was there. It was yeah. in the midst of that. Um, and I think that's, it's funny because I think a lot of people are like, well, like I got to go to church. I got to do things right. And then like God will love me. It's like, like, no, like he, he loves you before like, you did. Like he, he's been like wooing you, like wanting you to see like, man, I love you regardless of all that stuff. And, um, I want to make things right. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. So in that vein, I, I think a lot of our viewers at some point have had interactions with the Christian faith. <laughs> And I, I just want to, I, I just want to call out. That there's a big difference between what we know is the Christian faith and what it means to have a relationship with Jesus. A lot mm. of the times, so as you were going through all that stuff, the binge drinking, the mm. you know smoking weed, whatever you mm. were doing with girls and stuff, <laughs> was there ever a time yeah. where you felt, um, I, I guess, like a, a, a condemnation from the Christian faith or judgment from the Christian faith or people who called themselves Christians and made you want to run the other way? Mm. That's a good question. Um, I think, I think, probably, probably to some degree, I probably did have some, you know, but it wasn't the the crazy thing is like it wasn't the majority. Like I think the part of my story when I first heard the gospel from like Ben and, and Alden and, and Aaron Fleming and those guys and Jeff Basie and those guys that like I, I started getting in community with, like I felt um, there's probably a couple other people who I won't mention their names, but like a couple other people that maybe sort of stood the ground of like, 
of, of on the side of like condemnation of like or judgment of like hey you shouldn't do that or hey you shouldn't do this or like mm-hmm. and maybe I, I perceived it that way but from those guys I think there was always this underlying thing of like I love you and when I first saw that I was like these guys are fake <laughs> like <laughs> Christians are fake <laughs> like if there's anyone out there Christians are fake like that no like it I was like because I had never seen it I was mm-hmm. like I saw it and I was like it's like, what are you trying to get out yeah, of me? Yeah, it's like, what do you want? Like, what? Like, are, there's no way that you just love me this much for no reason. And um, and so, and that's what I believed. And then I started, like, hanging out with them because they just didn't go away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they were, like, they were there and they're, um, <laughs> and, and, I, and it was like, oh, I'm playing sports with them and different things. It's like, no, they, there's something different. Uh, like, I don't believe what they believe, but, like, they have a love that's undeniable. Um, and they seem to just care about me and, like, be invested in me and, and like, want what's best for me more than I want for myself. Like, mm-hmm. which is a strange thought that someone else could actually want something more for you than you want for yourself. And so, like, there was condemnation in a sense of like, but I think if I really look at it now, like a lot of that was just like myself not wanting to give up certain things that I was holding idols over God. And, I, mm. and <laughs> <Oof>. <laughs> yeah. right. So, but, but the love never fails. Like the love that they had went past all of that stuff. I think um, if you ever meet Ben or some of those guys, like, like they they love so like because it's christ in them like christ actually loves us so and that's that was something that like i looked at and i was like i don't believe what you're saying about jesus i'm like what about science what about dinosaurs and all this stuff (laughs) it's like um and and ben and them be honest like you know i don't i don't know about all that but one thing i do know is that jesus is real and he saved me in that I love mm-hmm. you. Okay, well, let's so. let's kind of go into that. So you talked about <laughs> your life before everything, and yeah. you know what kind of led up to that. What was the catalyst? What was the breaking point for you? Because, you know, I, you bring up a good point. Mm-hmm. Well, what about science? What about the dinosaurs? What about the facts? What about the logic? What yeah. what was it for you that kind of broke all that and kind of reconciled mm-hmm. to yourself? Well, this person that I can't touch, mm-hmm. see, or feel is real, <laughs> and he loves me, and I'm going to base my life on this. Yeah. What was the ca- <laughs> what turned? That's that's it right that's the that's the that's the the truth shall set you free that's it has some at some point every person has to like you have to believe with your heart like this something has to happen and oh man it's so hard to explain lord help me like <laughs> like, like i think if i could explain it perfectly to everybody everyone would be like oh yeah and like come to jesus and it's like so mm-hmm. um i just pray that that I can explain it well. So, the, so I think um, there's a lot of leading up and, and maybe explaining the leading <clears> up <throat> and then the short piece of like the catalyst, maybe the best way to do that. Um, sure. And so, cause it, I've explained a little bit of it, but what that really looked like in just a holistic, like a overall overarching way is like, I didn't grow up in church. Um, through circumstances and different things like I met Ben in college and the gospel was shared to me and Mm -hmm. um I've explained a little bit about that but just the way that everything happens like God uses every single thing I think um to like woo us through life and because I think we put like when we don't believe in God like we put them in a box and it's like these people just believe in this thing and it's like I think when the realization that like God is real like actually sinks in and like you believe it with all that you are is like you start to see man like all those coincidences that i thought were coincidences Mm -hmm. were not coincidences like Mm -hmm. um and i think god gives us that revelation but um just to explain a little bit is like i know i'm rambling but ben and this guy named mike lane met each other uh or through their girlfriends both were roommates at app state so it's like oh that's a coincidence it's like that's crazy that that they were and mike lane actually went to my high school Mm -hmm. and my mom actually worked with his dad and was like hey you should meet this guy mike lane we randomly 
randomly cross paths in the mm-hmm. brickyard. And so there's like all this stuff that happened. And then I meet Ben and then Ben introduced me to Daniel. And then also I get in community. So I, it, I start hearing the gospel, seeing it and being like, man, these guys are different, but I don't believe what they believe, which I've already talked about briefly. Fast forward like nine years. Um, well, before I go there, there was this one moment in the brickyard at state where I don't know if you guys know this, I broke my hand in college because I was drinking <laughs> fireball shots. Don't do them. Uh, and I was yelling obscenities out of a window at some people um, that I thought were funny. Um, and it's like, and it's, it wasn't, it wasn't funny. Me and this guy got in an argument and I ended up, getting in a fight with him and breaking my hand on his face, like having $20,000 in medical bills. And, um, at a time when my mom had lost her job, we were on food stamps. I was doing engineering, um, to try and like, you know, help our family or something. That was my motive. And, um, and I think (laughs) like, it was one of those moments where I was like, I can't, I was collection agencies calling me. I can't pay it. I don't want to get a job because I'm barely passing school right now. <clears throat> and those guys like Ben being like, dude, I be- like, I believe in you. Like, like you're smart. Like you're, you have what it takes. And mm-hmm. like, um, was such a, a big deal in that time when I didn't believe in myself. Um, and I, w- I would say like, I wouldn't be an engineer today if it wasn't for, those like people like Ben where they believed in me when I, when I didn't even see it. And that's funny cause that's what Jesus does. Mm-hmm. Like he, he sees things in people like fishermen and tax collectors. And he's like, you don't have any, like, like at least belief in yourself, but I see something mm-hmm. in you. Um, that is, uh, I know I'm going on a tangent here, but that, that is like, that matters. That's good. That like, that, that, is the reason why you're alive and anyways so back to the story is like i was walking through the brickyard one day and all of a sudden like these guys these christians come up to me and like hey can we pray for you i'm like (laughs) i'm always like get away from me (laughs) that's presumptuous (laughs) i was in a super cynical and i'm like well what if you're gonna pray for anything like pray that my medical bills get like dropped and they're like oh. and I remember the guy like looking at me and being like all right but if it happens no it was Jesus and uh and so I just tell a story to tell about a seed that happened and um so I had written a letter to financial aid didn't hear anything back I got convicted about that I was lying about trying to cover up what happened that night I broke my hand mm-hmm. and I wrote another letter, which doesn't make any sense. So the first letter you wrote trying to get it written off and yeah. you were completely truthful. Right. And Sec- so you felt convicted about that. Okay. Mm-hmm. And wrote another letter <clears throat> that was basically like, hey, I got in a fight. Hey, I made like the worst mistake in my whole life. Um, but if I graduate with like fifty, sixty thousand dollars $60,000 in bills and debt, like I'm good. Like I, co- like I come from a poor family, like uh, I'm going to be in debt for a long, long time. And, uh, and I'm sorry. And I messed up and like literally like a week later, I got a letter back that was like $20,000 medical bills reduced to a hundred dollars. (laughs) Whoa. That's awesome. (laughs) And that was like, I remember calling my mom and be like, Hey mom, I think about becoming a Christian. (laughs) (laughs) Because Jesus gives me things. Yeah, exactly. I was like, (laughs) and so like, that's not what it was about. Right. That didn't come to to Mm -hmm. faith then, but it was like, (laughs) <laughs> it was but all I could think about was like if it happens no it was Jesus if it happens no it was Jesus if it happens like it just kept playing over and over in my head uh, so fast forward like four more years to like a little <clears throat> like two years ago and then, now we're talking about the catalyst so mm-hmm. God sent like person after person after person nine years after me um, and and um, the catalyst was actually um, a lot of it was a couple different things and it was Basically, like, my mom was having heart surgery. Mm-hmm. And so I was thinking about, like, okay, if I lose my mom, like, what happens to her? Um, and, like, <laughs> asked my friend Ryan to pray <clears throat> for her. 
So it's like, oh, I don't believe in God, but like, I'm going to ask my buddy Ryan. To, so like when stuff hits the fan. It's like that agnostic, <laughs> well, I don't know what I believe, uh-huh. but if this is true, I want this to happen. Right, yeah. exactly. And that's where I stood. I stood in that middle ground of, I, w- I would consider myself agnostic. And, um, but I knew I didn't like masturbating and pornography and different things, but I was for some reason, okay. with like sleeping with my girlfriend at the time. And it's like, and Holy Spirit convicted me of all that, like help later. Um, (laughs) but basically like the night I got saved. So here we get to it. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember I couldn't sleep on Sundays and, and I, I had been like, watching these things on the history channel about jesus and i was like man jesus existed like even like historians like believe jesus was real i was like no one like no one on the earth is like well jesus didn't exist i mean maybe some people are but like people are like man like historically like jesus was a guy like he Mm -hmm. he was there's the most most famous person that ever existed all times based off of him so like like he existed um and i was fighting I was in a relationship where I was actually sleeping with my girlfriend and I was fighting masturbation and pornography temptation. So it was bad. Like I had like this like thing in me that was like, you want to do this, but I didn't want to do it. If that makes sense. Cause I knew mm-hmm. when I did it, I felt shameful and I couldn't look at people in the eyes, which like you look <laughs> at me now, like <laughs> I do not have that shame in my life at all. Praise God. Um, but it, I was fighting it and I tried to fight it, fight it, fight it, fight it. Cause once I realized I didn't want to do that in college, mm-hmm. um, and what it was bringing, it was bringing shame and different things. It's like a, the reason you don't want to ask a girl out, the reason you don't have boldness, the reason different things is like, <clears throat> because you're masturbating, looking at porn all the time and it's like ruining you. Mm-hmm. And when I, and so I was like, you could listen to that and be like, well, like maybe, and the people that say that are doing it every day. Well, you know, there's a lot of people that, <laughs> that talk about that and they say, like so many people say this about so many things. If it's not hurting anybody, yeah. then why should I feel bad about it? Well, stop it for a week and see what happens is the thing. Because I stopped. and But then I was trying to do it on my own strength and couldn't, couldn't stop. And, mm-hmm. and so it was like um, the night I got saved that was rising up in me. It was like really bad. I remember just taking my Bible and cracking it open. And that desire left. Mm -hmm. And it was like significant enough that I was like, it is gone. And if that's real, I should probably listen to the sermon that my buddy Andrew sent me. Because Ryan was the last, Ryan Farlow is the last guy that God sent into my job. Started talking to me and Andrew about God. Mm -hmm. Andrew started going back to church, heard this sermon that was like very logical. We're both engineers. He's like, I think you'll really like this. (laughs) And it was like, I listened to it the other day and I was just like bawling. I was like, uh, like, cause you like listen to it. And it's just like, it's so logical. Like it's mm-hmm. all Tim Keller. Like if you read like the reason for God, or listen to his sermons, it's stuff. It's, and it's from a Presbyterian church. I, I would say I'm more charismatic now than like, I don't have a really a gauge for don- denominations, but it, it, the catalyst there was, was just like stuff really hitting the fan to some degree in my life. But then like, having just chains and bondage and different like brokenness in my life and and just being like and god is like through people is just like wooing me in Mm -hmm. and me taking a step of faith and being like does this work and god's like and like and so i listened to that sermon after that like immediately after i opened the bible and that left i was like all right Mm -hmm. let me listen to it It it's about the way the truth the life so uh for those of you who don't know john 14 6 says uh Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one, it's an exclusive statement, no one comes to the Father except through me. Um, And so as an agnostic person, I always was standing in this middle ground of like, uh, of my beliefs. And the sermon just started addressing my running from God. It was like Mm -hmm. all that stuff that you've been running from and not like looking into, like, let's talk about that. And, um, and basically, um, that night is like, okay, I'm standing in this middle ground of like, um, of like, I don't really know what to believe. Like I, I, and what happened was, um, we just, this pastor in the sermon started talking about those different things. He'd started talking about a coincidence. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like. 
um, <clears throat> what are the odds that this sermon would talk speak directly to like your situation and like exactly where you're at? And it's like, oh, it's God, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, I I mean I could go. I don't know if you want me to go through like the logic piece of that or if you feel moved to go for it. Yeah. Um, so there's this idea of like you're standing in the middle ground. It's like pluralism is this idea that um, all religions are the same and everything is kind of like... Uh, if it's true for you, it's true. Well, that's relativism. Pluralism is more <laughs> like, uh, it, like uh, Muslim faith, Christian faith, like Hindu faith, like Buddhism, like agnostic, atheist, like... Or just like, it's like all the religions are saying the same thing. Mm-hmm. And it's like, for one, that's just not true. Like, so everyone has a truth that they're living by. Even if you don't believe in Jesus or, or God, like you're, you're still operating out of a truth, even if that truth is that you don't have one. So truth equals no truth is an equation that I realized that night doesn't really make sense. Like it, it, if, if you're a math person, like truth equals no truth it literally like self defeats, like it, it doesn't co- compute. And so like, so it's like, is there a case that there is one truth that holds true for everybody? Because relativism is the idea that like, there isn't one truth that holds true for everybody. The problem with that mm-hmm. is that by saying there isn't one truth that holds true for everybody, like that statement in itself is a truth that you're saying holds true for everybody. <laughs> So it defeats itself, and then you're back in the bubble of, like, truth equals no truth. Because what I'm saying, like, is I'm saying that that there isn't one truth that holds true for everybody. Like, everyone's just a product of their environment. By saying that, I'm claiming to know the truth that holds true for everybody. So it's hypocritical, and, (laughs) like, it defeats itself in logic. And pluralism is, like, it, and I kind of stood in that ground of like, well, I don't want to offend anybody. And I don't like, I, I am being more tolerant by saying like, oh, as long as like you believe what you believe, like that's fine. And the problem, and I was like, well, all religions are kind of the same, love God, love others. Problem with doing that is it has the appearance of humility and like passiveness, but it actually like is intolerant in a way because you're basically saying like, your the particularities in your religion and your faith aren't true mm-hmm. so you can't like you can't hold this middle ground like i mean you can but the problem with holding this middle ground is that truth equals no truth doesn't make any sense and and when i saw that um i was like it's just something came over me it's like that's why i'm broken mm-hmm. it's like if i'm operating like does it hold any water <clears throat> does that concept make sense like what is driving my life um and it's like if it's no if it's that i don't know or don't have a truth atheism agnostic then like that equation is literally like defeating itself and it's like of course i'm going to be confused of course i'm going to be broken inside of course i'm not going to know what to do like i have a great job i have a good girlfriend like i have these things like my family is like but i still feel empty Mm -hmm. um and so then the case for Jesus is like, okay, I am the way, the truth, the life. Do you ignore that? Do you call Jesus a liar? Like, like where do you stand on that? Like you can't, like you can't just brush that under the rug. I think that's the thing about Jesus. He's like, you either gather with me or you scatter. Mm-hmm. Either for me or you're against me. And so he's making an exclusive statement, a very strong statement. Um, but you look at Jesus and who he was. He was the most inclusive person to ever exist. Mm -hmm. Person that saw potential in people that didn't see potential in themselves. Oh, man, those words. (laughs) So for those of you who don't know, uh, we have a home group, and uh, Kyle attended one night, and then he went home and wrote this awesome song that's actually going to be on the website here pretty soon. And it's like one of my favorite songs. Like It it sets me on fire. So every time he talks about potential, I'm like, ooh. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that one's called Alive, and, and yeah, it's, uh, so yeah, check out the song if you want to check it out, but um, mm. it, yeah, it, it is just one of those things where, yeah, he's making an exclusive statement, which people maybe could feel like <clears throat> I am being judged or, like, excluded, but the thing about it is, like, <clears throat> he's love, and so he's the most inclusive, most caring, 
most per- like I, I would say almost everybody that talks about Jesus like in some regards like he's a good guy so you're looking at it and you're like well is he's either God or he is a crazy person like he he people claimed he raised people from the dead that like he he um he just loved with reckless abandon like he he cared about the lost the sinners the broken the tax collectors and he's saying a kingdom divided against this i just read the gospel that night so it was like i it was like what's the case for jesus is like well a kingdom divided against itself can't stand like if i'm evil i'm divided against myself by what i'm doing and so it's like he, there you know it's like and, and that's what the pharisees were saying it's like you're crazy like you're a crazy person it's like he is if he's not god Mm -hmm. but he's God and so I had this moment where it was like well I don't want to believe nothing (laughs) and so like what do I want to believe and here's the case for Jesus is that like he loved me so much that he chased me down those nine years that I ran from him not only like 2,000 years ago when he said forgive them father they don't know what they do and hung on a cross and so that we could be redeemed now today like he hasn't stopped loving us and hasn't stopped running after us and it was this moment where i just saw like jesus is love Mm -hmm. (laughs) and like and like he exists and like existed and like did what he did for me and then god like put together that logic with like the love that surpasses knowledge which is basically like it doesn't make sense that people would love you for no reason it's something that messes with logic and the night i got saved it was like those people like all those nine nine years i ran from god like loved me Mm -hmm. never gave up on me saw the best in me like brought brought up the best in me and 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 i was i just saw the, the the truth that i needed to live by was jesus because he was love Mm -hmm. and that was something worth living for and uh that holds water that (laughs) makes a fountain um and (laughs) sorry i get emotional but (laughs) i i think uh and i got emotional that night on my and i was i i took that sermon and i and it was like man i believe jesus i believe you're real and i believe you did it makes sense what you did but before it didn't make sense now i believe you're real and you're God. And I was praying on my bed that night. And I was just like, Jesus, if you're, if you're real, I pray you would reveal yourself to me. If you do, I will live for you. And like that, right in that moment, I get different visions or understandings about what happened now, but I just felt like warmth in my chest and like all of my brokenness and everything that like I was searching for, um, just come into completion and like warmth and like fire is just like whoosh, like in my chest and I'm crying and I'm like <laughs> oh my gosh you're real you're real freaking out crying on my bed and I get visions now of like what happened and I just I sense that like Jesus like walked up next to my bed and was just like and just like touched my chest and it was just like you're mine I love you and it's like I've been here all along and I never gave up on you and I'm with you and uh, I'm gonna walk beside you and uh and that's big and that's real and it happened and it's just like uh john wesley like you you look up him like he he had this moment where he describes his heart was strangely warmed and i never found words for what happened that night but um later on i was at ryan's house and i told him what happened you know he's one of my good friends he's a believer and he's like He's like got his Bible out. He's like, hey, let's talk about repentance and and just said like the word repentance and that's the idea of just changing your mind. Because I was still sleeping with my girlfriend, I was still doing things. I was like, oh, because you could believe in God that He's real and and not have change in your life. It says the demons believe in Him and tremble. Mm-hmm. But it's till you repent and you turn and you change the way you're thinking for yourself instead of for yourself. Instead, of, and then you. you leave living for yourself behind and you go and you live for god and for others that's the change of mind that changes you it's his goodness that draws us in and i got a vision that night that the nine years all the people that god sent after me was him the twenty thousand dollars in medical bills was him every step of the way it wasn't just people it wasn't just like their love their own work it was god 
pursuing me over and over and over again. And I tell you what, like, if you have that realization, it will wreck you. And it wrecked me that night. I just remember just crying. It's like, and Ryan would describe it. He's like, you know, when God's doing something, like, you don't touch the altar. You just kind of, like, let it happen. Like, he just said a few words. And I, I God gave me this vision. And I was just like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, God, you love me so much. <laughs> and that stuff will change you. That's what repentance is about, is seeing his goodness and being like, I want to live for that. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like really that's when Holy Spirit started convicting me about sleeping with my girlfriend and it's like you're not going to do that anymore started and I just I just every day just going after him mm-hmm. and like stuff started to change and and I, I didn't have the same battle with pornography that you know I was fighting every day I didn't have like stuff just started like just falling off like I, I was like I don't want to drink Mm-hmm. Like, I don't even, like, it's not that it was bad to drink. I was just like, I don't want to. Like, I don't need to. I'm fulfilled in him. Like, I have this peace and this excitement that, mm-hmm. like, and so I still have it. <laughs> you can tell, like, it's still mm-hmm. there. Um, and that that's just my story in a, in a nutshell, or maybe a big nutshell. But <laughs> I, I um, but I think the logic piece is really important. And because mm-hmm. um, until you believe, like, until you understand um, and some of those lies, like pastors are just doing this for money, you know, um, what happens like if I believe and like my family doesn't believe, like just different things are in your heart before you get saved. And it's like, you have to kind of make this decision that like, n- that none of that, if, if pastors are doing that, they're deceived. If like, if, if my family doesn't believe, like, am I just going to like ignore this truth? Because honestly, like if this is, if God's real and this is what he has for us, like who's to say like, you aren't the one that's supposed to lead your family to Christ. Mm -hmm. Who's to say that like, you you know what I mean? So like, what are you going to do? Just ignore it because you're like, have some sort of sentimental value or enmity against a church or someone hurt you. It's like, no, like God love, like loves all of us. And Jesus, like he made this way through his love. And we have to, but I think logically we have to see that. We have to be, we have to know it. Like, so it's not, uh, I think sometimes like with Christianity, we need to be okay with like talking to people about these things and and confronting it. And, Mm -hmm. um, and it's not to prove that you're right. It's the, it's the simple fact that like, maybe like at some point someone might like, have a realization and just a change of heart and and be saved and be like and understand like man i've been living my whole life wrong and uh and i thought this was right and it made sense it was right until god showed himself that he was real to me and it became a reality in my life and everything changes after that Mm -hmm. so and I was thinking, I, I was, t- I, you know, I, I shared Jesus with a waitress the other night at a, a Japanese restaurant. I was eating with Brandon <laughs> and she, she was, and, and she, you know, she was like, I'm going to cry and all this stuff. And, and it was like, she was like, man, I got a lot of stuff that I need to fix in my life and just had this, there's just moments of grace. And I, I looked at her and I was like, and God was just, you know, speaking through me and, and I was like, seek after him and he'll make everything right like mm-hmm. you don't have to like you come to him and be like i'm perfect because that's not going to happen if that happened there'd be no reason for jesus um but you come after him and his love like you'll see his love and when you see that love and you go after him like he'll start to make things right and we shouldn't be scared of losing stuff i think that was a big fear i had was like Oh, I have to give up drinking. I have to give up this lifestyle. I have to give up all these things. I love Dan Muller always says, he's like, well, the only, only thing you have to give up is what you're never created for anyways. Because if God created you, his will and his love is going to be the best thing for you anyways because he is love. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think that's a really good point too because you know something that God's been showing me over the past year that's having more and more impact and more and more truth is that the gospel isn't about getting into heaven. It's not about, you know, <laughs> arriving at a destination. Yeah. It's about the process. I mean, you and I are both reading that book right now, Present Perfect by Greg Boyd. Mm-hmm. And it talks about uh, God in the now. Like, what does that actually look like? And kind of like that waitress, I think a lot of people feel like, well, 
I like the idea of being a Christian. I like the idea of Jesus, but there are all these statutes and expectations in the Christian Bible that I have to live up to. And because people have modeled it this way, I realize that I can't come to Jesus being unclean or, you know, I, I'm so sent like the, the separation of church and sinners, like mm-hmm. that, that's a big thing, you know, mm-hmm. but um, I, I think living a life where you show people that God is in the process, he's not at the destination. He's in the process. It's yeah. so, so powerful. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's uh, true. I'm, I'm, I'm really thankful that you tell people that because so, so many people need to be freed from the bondage of thinking that they have to be something more than they're created to be. Yeah. Adam wasn't meant to be created or he wasn't created to be perfect. Yeah. He was created to be a son and to be loved and to be, you know, forgiven. Right. You know, and I think it's scriptural like it, it, you know, I'm not just this isn't like Kyle's opinion. It's like uh, Galatians 2 says, it says, have you now begun in the spirit? Are you being made perfect by the flesh? We can't like we can't do it on our own. It comes from the hearing of faith and just like going after God. And then the grace comes to like change us mm-hmm. um, so that it, but, I, but it's funny because like all those things are happening to me. Like, I think I was talking to Ryan last night uh, and his family, and, and I love them so much. You know, without them, I say, like, man, I, I wouldn't be saved. And, <laughs> like, like one of the things uh, we were talking about, gosh, I just lost my train of thought with the Farlows. Oh, no. <laughs> this happens. It's okay. Sometimes it happens. It's like maybe I wasn't supposed to go down that rabbit hole. Mm-hmm. Um, I literally forgot exactly what I was talking about. That's okay. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we got a couple <laughs> more minutes. Would you talk a little bit about your life now? Because before you said that you know you were in bondage to finances. Your family yeah. was kind of poor. You were living a lifestyle that wasn't awesome. You know, you there were certain things that you thought were funny that were actually not. That were actually um, mm-hmm. the opposite of life giving to people. Yeah. Um. Now that Jesus has come into your life and that that's your standard and that you're operating in love and would you talk a little bit about when you wake up in the morning, what your perspective is and like what's your drive? Because I know a lot of the people I talk to, um, when I ask them what their purpose is, they say, well, here's what I do for a living. Mm-hmm. And your vocation does not frequently uh, equal your purpose. Right. So it. Talk a little bit about that. When you wake up, what is your purpose for the day? And how do you navigate that? What kind of fulfillment? Um, Talk to me. Yeah. So I used a verse again uh, in Romans. It's at the end of Romans 6. And it talks about um, what fruit did you have back then and the things that you were ashamed of. So like what fulfillment and purpose did you have in the things that you were doing before you were saved? It's kind Mm -hmm. of what that verse means. I think that verse is such a big testimony of like my life since being saved because I wake up every morning and I find that like God honors the perspective that you live by, the faith that you actually, and it's it's not, it's a, again, this isn't like a Kyle-like belief. It's, it's, it's one of those things where it's just like when you release faith, when you believe and you live a certain way, God's like, I see your understanding, I see your knowledge, I see your faith. Mm-hmm. You're living a certain way, and I'm going to bless that and honor that, and, and you're like you're abiding in me, so there's going to be fruit. Um, and so my perspective since being saved and now is like I wake up every morning, and I'm like, uh, God, help <clears throat> help me honor you today. Help me uh, like love you well. And, and I think it's like it's one of those things where it's like um, basically – abiding in him like i don't it's not a religious thing like i don't read my bible to like get knowledge or to like prove someone wrong i i read it to like get to know him and to like be with him and to have the perspective that like life is not about me like you're talking about purpose as a vocation it's like my life all of a sudden like i i lived my whole life for me and what i thought was right and wrong and when I got saved, that's like that's a complete lie. Like it seems right. Like it seems like the right thing to do. But the true perspective and true like if we if God is love and we're made in his image, then like our perspective 
has to shift because self-centeredness and love are complete 180 of one another. So we're all born into self-centeredness. And like, again, this is Dan Muller, but it's also like the gospel. Like it, it's, it's the truth about what Jesus did brought us back to reality. Because you think about if God is love and love doesn't seek its own, keeps no records or wrong, it's like always seeks the best of somebody else and sees their potential and is patient and kind and like loving. Like that is love. Like that's the, like the Bible gives us a definition of what love is, which is amazing. I never saw that. When I first got saved, I was like, oh my gosh. I never knew what love. I don't know. There's a song. <laughs> so like, um, but it, it's there. And it's like God wants us to see that and understand that we need to wake up every day living for others so then like when circumstances like no longer have like you you, you, there's different things that you can let be the lord and governing factor of your life besides jesus but if jesus is love and you keep that above everything else and you live by the perspective that today it's not about me being done right it's not about people loving me it's not about people caring me it's about me being a fountain not a drain Mm -hmm. Like, (laughs) then all of a sudden, like, you're living through that perspective. And I would say, like, God has done some amazing things in my short time of being saved. Um, And that that is not like, oh, Kyle's boasting or bragging. It's like, no, like, I... I literally would be walking down the street and God would send me like a homeless person or like I've been pulled pulled into my parking space and like God like sends this lady who's like freaking out her like her father's in the hospital and she uh, doesn't have enough gas to get there and stuff like that and and so just you know and you're like what did you do I hopped in the car Mm -hmm. I don't I don't like I don't like think about my own like you're like that's that's not wise it's like well you know it's probably gonna wreck somebody that you're willing to hop in the car that you don't really that you're not really thinking about yourself you're only thinking about them that you care about them that you love them that you lay down your life for that person just like jesus did mm-hmm. um it changed like it, it stamps people those are them like if love never fails and, and god is love and love is eternal there's um those moments are why we're all alive and those moments are and that love is is the only thing that's going to stand through the fire and through the world passing away. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I like how you just said that love stamps people because that is so true. Like um, I remember in my life, there have been several people that just gave and gave and gave and gave into me without the expectation of a return. Mm-hmm. And it, it always just tickled the back of my mind. Like, why are they doing this? There, there was one specific guy, Keith Beck. And Keith, if you ever watch this, man, I am so thankful for <laughs> everything you've done for me. But that That's man cool. put years of himself into my life and years of his finances and years mm-hmm. of his you know, car and miles and time away from his family into me. And I definitely wasn't anything special back then, you know? Mm-hmm. And it just got me thinking, like, why? Like, what, what the heck, man? Like, what is this? You know, but that's such good imagery, just thinking that your whole life is about going around stamping people with love. Mm-hmm. Uh, Why, well, as the Bible says, you know, being a seed planter. Right. You know. Yeah. I, yeah, I think of one particular moment that happened to me, and um, it was during COVID. Like, COVID had just started, and there was this homeless guy, and his name was Larry. So, Larry, if you ever see this, buddy, I love you. And... Uh, Man, we we would cry probably right now if we're talking to one another. But, uh, you know, he came up to, like, I was sitting on the bench one day. There's this park where I used to live, and there's benches all around this, like, amphitheater. And and he's sitting on the bench, and all of a sudden he just gets up. Um, And, again, like, I have a perspective that I'm, like, I'm living my life by. If anyone's in need, I'm going to help them regardless of, like, I have the means. I can do it. Let's do this. So he comes up, and he's like, hey, I just felt like I should come over and talk to you. And he's just like, I, I lost everything. I lost my family. Like, I, lo- I, I was drinking, but now I feel like that's been taken away from me. Like, I don't have a, but I just want to get back on my feet. And no one will talk to me. Like, mm-hmm. the shelters won't let me in. The COVID's like, I'm just out here on the streets. Can you help me? And I just remember, you know, just out of, like, just, I just gave him some money or whatever. He comes back a couple of days later and has, like, shoes and, like, a shirt and, like, used the money to, like, better himself. Mm-hmm. And I remember just listening. I just like, God, what do you want to do? Because I feel like this is this is special. And God said, give him this amount of money. And he had a certain amount of time that he, he felt like he was going to be homeless or whatever. And he was just trying to get back on his feet. And I, 
I remember walking to the ATM. I was like, really? This, this seems like more than I'm comfortable giving him. And uh, got the money out, went, sat next to him on the bench and like gave him the, the money. And it, was, it wasn't like he prompted, he didn't ask for it. I just, you know, I felt like that's, I was like, that's what the Lord told me to do. And, and like he took the money from me and just started crying. And he was like, he was like, why would you do this? I was just like, look back at him. I was like, because Jesus loves you, man. Like Jesus cares about you. The Lord told me to give you that money. And like, you can't ever take that from him. Like it stamps him. That's how I learned that. Mm -hmm. It's like, like when I did something that didn't make sense to me, but it was love and the Lord told me out of faith, it wrecks people. Like it, it it is the one thing that there's no law against. It stamps someone and it is there for eternity. And uh, long story short, like I remember I was trying to, he had a, I was like, what's your plan? I remember him being out in the cold, like in the rain and like me just going out there and like put my arm around him and being like, it'll be okay, man. Like we'll get through this. And uh, sorry, <laughs> like, like it wrecks me every time I think about it. Um, Cause he didn't have anything and no one believed him and no one cared. And it's not my own righteousness. It's like God's love cared about this man. Um, and I was just there. And so like to be part of that um, is so special. And you talk about living your whole life and not having anything like that happen. And all of a sudden God can use you to change people's lives. And to get, so ended up getting a call at work and I, uh, that he got into the rescue mission. Hey. And like he's, he's got, he went to like the second stage and, but he called me and I just remember listening to him. He's like, man, God in. And I was like, because you're out there for weeks, like just with them, like in the cold and stuff. And he's like, I got it. I lost it at work. You know, if anyone from work's watching, you probably walked by that day and were like, what's wrong with Kyle? Like I was like literally like uncontrollably sobbing, like the fact that God would redeem somebody. Like we were praying and we were caring. And and, uh, and so that's how I learned that. Uh, not only from my own testimony, but like mm -hmm. God speaking through me or just like doing something through me and, and I learned something about faith and giving is like when you give a little bit past what you what you're comfortable with like uh, there's something special about that just because it's love that like surpasses knowledge it is the love of Christ like um and it it's eternal it'll always be there you can't change that you can't take that from Larry Mm -hmm. like he's he's following god he's going after god now and like i don't know man i get i get emotional because it's like if if anything like if me being saved helps save one person like it's worth it yeah so uh anyways i'm sorry man no that's, this happens. Dude, that's awesome <laughs> and I, I think that's a really good testimony for it because yeah i think a lot of people they don't really understand what it means to follow Jesus. And I think a lot of people, especially down here in the, the Bible Belt where we live, look at following Jesus or being a Christian as a, a self-righteous thing. Yeah. It's like a status, like on Facebook, religion, Christian, you know. Yeah. And there's a lot of status that comes with that, uh, supposedly. But it's just it's so cool to see people live out being loved by Jesus because our commandment when when Jesus came he said I have fulfilled the law which previously was all these like things right mm -hmm. and Jesus's commandment to us says love God with all your heart and love others as yourself and it's three parts it's love God yeah and love others as yourself which means you have to love yourself yeah and you don't know what that looks like unless you allow God to do that mm -hmm. right and I just think it's so cool because it's you're, you're supposed you can't pour from an empty cup. You have to be full before you can pour out. Yeah. You know, just watching your life. You've been a Christian for how long? A little less than two years. Yeah, you know, and I've seen more fruit come out of your life than people who have striven to. Well, you know, I, uh, my my job does this, and I'm able to tithe this much. It's it's not about that. It's about the heart behind it. Yeah. And guys, you know, I I've not met many people in my life that have more heart than Kyle. Um, just like, especially in his music, man, if you ever get a chance to hear his music, the guy is talented and, and not talented. Like he knows all the core. I mean, he knows all that stuff, but talented as like his music makes you feel stuff, you know? And that's, what's so special about music, you know? Yeah. But, um, 
it's just really cool to see you living from overflow. And um, I really appreciate you, you hanging out with me today and just talking about how you got to where you're at. Um, if you had to communicate to the people watching right now one nugget of wisdom, like what would you like them to know? What What is something that they you would want them to take away from this? Um, I would say... Whether you're saved or whether you're not saved, if you seek him with all your heart, you'll find him. And when you find him, you'll find why you were created. And um, I, I would just, I, I, and it sounds like rhetorical. It sounds like, you know, um, but it, and I think some people would be like, well, it's not all about love. It's all and all about, it's like, well, 1 Corinthians 13 says, if I have all knowledge and all wisdom and prophecy and I can move every mountain with my faith, it's like, but I don't have love, I have nothing. Mm -hmm. And so, like, clearly it is all about love. And um, and so um, uh, I'm, I'm not perfect. <laughs> like, I, I am not, like, I appreciate the, the compliments and, the, and everything was like, uh, I make my mistakes. I, you know, I, I don't do everything perfectly, but I know the one that is. And it's like the more I seek him, the more he reveals things to me. And, and it's exciting. Like it's exciting life. It's life and abundantly. It's, it's loving others. It's walking out like the reason we're here. And it doesn't make sense. Like it does like a lot of times it doesn't make any sense. Like you could like logically like think about it and be like, why am I here? And the world will tell you, you know, you do you, you get yours, you, and like, it's all about us and like, like individualism and, and, um, and I think it's all just deception. And if we would look unto Jesus and take his yoke and learn from him, it's like, we would, the, as the body and, and as people, maybe you don't know Jesus today. It's like, you want to know Jesus. It's like, seek after him seek after the truth like the truth will set you free and like, you might not even know that you're in bondage but i tell you what you know when you believe the truth and that freedom comes that you're changed and that things are different and that you're like i can't like joy just like <laughs> like like it like i'm like am i free like sometimes in my my thought patterns now, i was like am i free like it, it and and as i things get broken off of me or like stuff gets uncovered and I start to believe right like joy like it's just everyone I feel like a lot of people are just living out of like grind and like it's like life is a grind and different things and like certainly life can feel that way for me like life can be hard life can be difficult um but I think going back to him always going back to him and seeking after the Lord with all that we are so you seek me with you will find me when you seek me with all your heart and so we have to continue. It's not a works thing. It's just like out of love and like out of this place. And you're like, I just want to know you more. And when I know you more, like I have freedom and I have reason for being and purpose and potential in life and mm -hmm. life abundantly in it. It's not about what I can get from you. My purpose is in you, which sounds like almost simple and not easy to understand. But it's like you can make it about all these things that are temporal. But when you live out of him like you find contentment and peace and wholeness and like your purpose and your reason for being so i that was a long answer but it was good though yeah it's just a <laughs> it's just a basic like continue to seek and learn from him and, and the lord through faith will will continue to do like work the good works that he has prepared beforehand in you so mm -hmm. I don't know. That would be it. That would be my big nugget of wisdom. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, Kyle. Yeah. Um, so would you close this out by praying for our viewers? Yeah. All right. Well, Lord, thank you so much um, for today. Um, God, I just ask uh, anyone that is watching this, Lord, um, that you would uh, make your presence known to them more and more uh, through your truth, through your words, God. I just pray people would have radical encounters with you, goosebumps all over their body, Lord. Um, just a knowing and, and uh, just uncovering of your wisdom and your truth, Lord. Um, 
God, I pray for love to abound through all the people that that watch this, through us, through our lives, Lord, that you would pour out your spirit um, into men so that we overflow with your goodness and your joy and that your glory would shine on the earth um, to bring uh, glory and honor and blessing to your name and your purpose, God. I bless everyone that's watching. Um, and I just pray that, you know, if anyone doesn't know Jesus, Lord, um, God, I just, I just ask that um, you would make a way. Um, and if you don't know Jesus right now, it might be a good time to just, you know, pray and to ask God um, to reveal things to you, um, to reveal himself to you, um, to guide you into unwisdom, maybe, maybe, or all, all wisdom. Maybe you're saying, I don't believe, but I want to. Um, ask the Lord, like pray to God. And, and, and God, I just pray that you would reveal yourself through your mercy and your grace and your love for them. Um, and I bless everyone that's watching uh, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and guys, if uh, you're still hanging out, thank you so much for, uh, I guess, just hanging out with us and listening yeah. to Kyle's story. We love you, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>